Hi everyone and welcome to episode 4 of weekly mod picks for Fallout 4 and this now means that I've done a month of this feature which is pretty cool. This video is a little bit late um, but I had some things on the weekend so let's get started. So last week I featured two grass mods in one, it was called Grasslands and it had a decaying version and a vibrant version. Now Green Commonwealth is by the same mod author and this one goes more towards the vibrant tract and provides a very green commonwealth but with a bit better FPS than the other mod provided. It is very very green and very very bright and you can see there's some nice little bits of few colourful flowers interwoven into the grass as well giving a very nice summer meadow type effect. Now this mod is aimed at being more performance friendly than the other versions of the grass mods and I can say it is, it is more performance friendly but you will see still a significant drop in really dense areas, for example this one here. Now I suffered around about 10 FPS overall depending on where I looked in certain locations there and that's it's quite a bit of a hit but overall you're only really going to see 5 FPS at most in most areas such as the Red Rocket and Sanctuary. Please bear in mind all people's rigs are different and you may have a completely different experience to me with this mod than I did. However if you want the Commonwealth to look like a summer meadow then this may be a mod that you want to check out. Next we're going to head to the weapons table and take a look at the Bear Grylls Gerber Parang Machete. Now this is kind of moving away from weapons that feel right in Fallout, but I really like the design and style of this machete and I personally think it looks great in game. I am currently looking for some great weapons, melee weapons to use in game. I'm looking to build sort of a character for survival that uses some handheld knives etc and this may be a great addition when mods become available for the survival mode, well if they become available for the survival mode I should say. The textures on the blade could be improved somewhat but the design and style of the hilt or handle is really really nice and personally I think it looks great and I really do enjoy slashing people across the face with this weapon. Moving swiftly on then we have our next mod called Road Flares. Now this simply adds a new flare to the game which isn't a signal for reinforcements to come in or anything like that, it is simply to light up the dark nights and allow you to either see your enemies more clearly or just guide your way. These flares are added to vendors and can also be found in the level lists of the game so if you do use level lists in other mods please make sure to create a merge patch so everything works very nicely together. Personally I do like using flares in the game and it's a bit annoying when you get the message every now and again saying no Minutemen available or the Minutemen are coming to your aid sort of thing. I do like this idea and that's why it's in this week's mod picks. Now we're going to return to the weapons table again with this very fantastic modular Kalash assault rifle. Now this weapon offers a host of of attachments, refinements, whatever you want to call them, to create at least, apparently, according to the mod page, about 5 million weapon types, and that is an extreme amount of customization. So here in the crafting menu, we're going to take a quick glance at some of the modifications you can make to this weapon. Now I did mention this mythical 5 million mark, it's on the mod page, and this is generally down to the fact you can have a serious amount of ammo types for this weapon. Pretty much most of the ones you can think of. So if you add that into the mix, there is a massive amount of customization options that you can turn this weapon into. It pretty much suits all gameplay styles and characters. Now what I'm seriously hoping for with mods like this that have a modular setup and you can add a ton of attachments and mods to them, that in the future when we get the GEC or whatever they're going to call it and we can do a bit more scripting etc with other mod tools, I'm hoping we can see on the fly modding of weapons so we can just carry the mods around with us. We have a little tool and we can just obviously attach a scope here, a silencer there, etc. And that will add even more customization and variability to these mods, which will be absolutely fantastic, especially when playing survival mode. 
and this is because in my playthrough of survival at the moment I'm finding it a little bit difficult to manage my weight and the amount of weapons that I'm carrying around I just want everything so if in the future I can carry just a couple of weapon mods around with me this will greatly improve my flexibility in combat okay so the next mod I kind of cheated for it's only just been released today which is Monday um, but I'm adding it to last week's weekly picks anyway because I really like the idea and the design. The mod is called True Reporter and it adds two new outfits for Piper. In order to get the outfits you can craft them at the chemistry station and obviously you can port them to yourself via the console. You'll then of course have to enter conversation with Piper, trade with her and make her equip the outfit of your choice. There's also a version for the player, and that's this one here, the browner version of the two. It has Stimpak's strapped leg, some pencils around the waist, as well as a notebook or a journal for jotting down news stories. But my favourite has to be this version here with the camera attachment. It also has the traditional red style coat, which fits in very nicely with Piper's character. If Piper is one of your main followers, then this may be a mod that you want to take a look at. In my personal opinion, it makes some massive improvements to her vanilla outfit. And last up in this week's mod picks, we have the very bright and brilliant illuminated billboards. Now this mod is from the same authors as Red Rocket's Glare Redone, and it adds some illumination to the billboards that you can find throughout the Commonwealth. I really do like these illuminated mods because when I use a Darker Nights mod, I like something to guide my way because some of the settings for Darker Nights, it's really, really dark, depending on the weather as well, especially if you use true storms. So having these billboards around to light the way through the more built up areas in the Commonwealth is really, really handy. One of the things that I really like here as well is that after 200 years, somehow these billboards are still lit up and still illuminated it's kind of like a remnant of a forgotten age. Understandably, this mod will not be for everybody, but to be honest, if you don't like it, then don't use it. But if you do like it, you'll find a link down in the description below. Just remember to endorse the mods you use. And that goes for all the mods that I've shown in this week's mod picks. If you've liked them, you'll find links down in the description below that will take you to the mod page. And of course, as I'll re-reiterate once more, don't forget to endorse the mods you use. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.